Welcome to Ellet and North Springfield Presbyterian Church for this beautiful first Sunday in August. Welcome and any announcements? Joni? I just wanted to let everybody know that this week is the beginning of the next year's ACME cashback receipt program. It receipts starting on August 8th. If you're shopping at ACME, your receipt at the bottom will show a little figure there for cashback. We're collecting those receipts. There's a box in the narthex, and there are going to be another one we'll put down in the Christian Ed building. So for the next five months, Receipts dated August 8th through December 28th. Um, save your receipts, bring them in. The Presbyterian women collect these, tally them up. Last year we got nearly $450 cash back and we use that for our mission donations. So uh, we uh, have always had good support by the congregation and ask you to uh, help us again this year. Thank you. Is that any acne? Any acne. Any ACME. Are there any other announcements? Yes, ma'am. Um, August 11th, we're trying something new. It'll be our blessing of the animals service. Um, and so we'll have that down in the Christian Education Building. And um, we ask people bring animals either on a leash or in their cage um, or like traveling crate. Uh, if, an, if your animal is aggressive or anxious, we just ask that you would bring a picture instead of the actual animal to be blessed. Um, and then uh, on a more somber note, um, a lot of you have asked me about the prayer concerns today. Um, we were really saddened to hear that Kimberly Reinstra um, passed away. Um, and Lori has sent a letter to her daughter, um, but it's a, it was really sad to to hear of this. Uh, and one of our members found it in the newspaper under the listing of notices. Um, so if you need someone to talk to about this, I hope you'll reach out to me, and uh, we just keep her family and her friends in our prayers. Any other announcements? I would uh, just mention that uh, there's a restroom neutral on the other side of the wall for any guests that are here today. And with that, I'll uh, turn this over to Rob and Gary. In remembrance of me, eat this bread in remembrance of me, drink this wine in remembrance of me, pray for the time when God's own will is done. In remembrance of me, heal the sick. In remembrance of me, feed the poor. In remembrance of me, open the door and let your neighbors in. And let them in. Take, eat, and be comforted. Drink and remember me too. That this is my body 
and precious blood shed for you. Shed for you. In remembrance of me, search for truth. In remembrance of me, always love. In remembrance of me, don't look above, but in your heart, look for God. Do this in remembrance of me. If you're physically able and willing, please rise and we'll have the call to worship. God of the past who whispered in the prophet's ears, who rescued us from sin's bondage. God of the future who is tearing down the old world and building your kingdom in our midst. God of the present, who in the giftedness of our diversity creates us to be one people. The opening hymn is number 496, Bread of Heaven, On Thee We Feed. this call to confession. When we could be revived by God's grace, we find ourselves fearing God's judgment, doubting God's joy in us, fearing God has turned away from us. Let us come to the one who heals us and calls each of us by name. Please join me as we pray.
Do not be afraid. More than anything else, God loves us. God forgives us. God lifts us to new life. Thanks be to God. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. The first reading today comes from Psalms 116, uh, 1 and 2, and 12 through 19. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he has inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call upon him as long as I live. What shall I render to the Lord for his, all his benefits toward me? I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosened my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. The duet Rob and I are doing this morning will be heard a lot this week, I'm afraid, in light of our national tragedies. It will also be next Sunday's hymn. But as we hear it, Remember that it's a hymn of celebration. It's a song of joy. It's not national mourning. Our New Testament reading is from 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 17 through 26. Now, in the following instructions, I do not commend you, because when you come together, it is not for the better, but for the worse. 
For to begin with, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and to some extent, I believe it. Indeed, there have to be factions among you, for only so will it become clear among you who are, are genuine. When you come together, it is not really to eat the Lord's Supper. For when the time comes to eat, each of you goes ahead with your own supper, and one goes hungry, and another becomes drunk. What? Do you not have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you show contempt for the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What should I say to you? Should I commend you? In this matter, I do not commend you. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Merciful God, we come before you today carrying all of the things that we know to be true about the tragedies of today's world. Teach us, guide us, and lead us by your word. Comfort us by your spirit and reassure us in the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I had a whole message written, but at about 1 a.m. today, I realized that that message wasn't what needed to be shared. I don't know what words can capture the sense of tragedy but I think no words would be unethical to those whose blood cries out from the ground. Two mass shootings in 24 hours and we throw up our hands and ask God what now? What do we do? What next? How many more senseless deaths before change happens? Where do we look for answers? What do we say to those who grieve? How many of us know people who live in the city three hours from here who called to make sure that they were okay? And too many people now scramble to the convention center in Dayton, Ohio to try and figure out if their loved ones are okay. Senseless deaths and violence fill our news feeds, our news stations, and our radios. Violence that could have been avoided and too much silence on the, on the sake of too many people. You see, when Jesus met the disciples at the table, it wasn't just a moment of peace and joy. Jesus radically faced the reality of what was to come, an innocent person taking on the sins of all upon a cross. On the night that he was betrayed, he sat with his friends and he said, this is my body broken for you. This is my cup poured for you. Every time you do this, remember me. And then we fast forward 
to Paul's letter and we realize that even though we have this example of grace and this example of bounty and this example of coming together around a table when all else feels like it's falling apart, we see in Paul's letter that even though we know the example, we know the story, we participate in the remembering that our humanness can get in the way. See, Paul, before we hear the familiar language of our words of institution, we realize that he's addressing a concern of the church, saying, oh, church, you're kind of doing exactly what the world does still. You're dividing among each other. Some of you are eating while others are hungry. Some of you are drunk before we even participate in the Lord's Supper. Drunk on selfishness, gluttony, greed. Oh, church, you still separate based on differences. You cast people out. You have people sit at different tables based on their status even though we have the example of the one table where everyone is welcome, where there is a well that won't run dry, oh church, you still separate. You still prefer certain people. You still feed some and cast others out. He says, I do not commend you. Part of our process of rememory, of coming to the table, is to remember that Jesus broke bread, not as a symbolic moment alone, but to resemble the inbreaking of the kingdom of God. And he poured the cup saying, this is my blood shed for you and for the forgiveness of sins, and this is the new covenant, and it's sealed. This gift was given to us at the table of the Lord's Supper, and it's the gift that we encounter at the beginning of each month for us as this community. But it's not just an action that we take. It's participation in the covenant promise. So when we heard the rendition of in remembrance of me this morning, we realized that the three stanzas remind us that there is a remembrance, a, a actual remembering of the Lord's Supper that happens at the table. But then there's more. Because when we participate in this sacrament, we then say that we are a joyful offering, that we present ourselves to receive this, and in so doing that we remember that God is within us. So the song beautifully says, don't look up. Look within. God is inside you. And because of that, look for those who are hungry. Look for those who are thirsty. Look for those who are lonely. I equip you, says the Lord. We have all that we need when we are fed at this table. And that is the joy of this moment that we celebrate together. And yet, we all know that we woke up this morning to news that is devastating. I'm sorry that my sermon today isn't put together very well. 
I just couldn't find words. Because there's too much pain. And a sermon isn't the final answer to the pain. But I believe that God is still at work in each of us. And I believe that what happens at this table for us equips us to be helpers, to respond, to believe, to proclaim the good news that what's happening out there isn't what God intends for the world. That God intends a peaceable kingdom where everyone is welcome, where everyone is safe, where everyone belongs to one another and to God. This is the covenant that we participate in. So though we hear this language of Paul saying, oh church, what is going on? And though we wake up to the newsreel, we say, oh world, what is going on? God still meets us and still says, oh child, I love you. I hold you in your grief and I send you forward filled not for your own sake, but for the sake of those who also grieve today. What does that look like? It looks like action. It doesn't matter what your political beliefs are. Again, this is not a political platform. This is a divine understanding that God's kingdom is still breaking into the world by the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can make offerings of our own lives in each day as it goes on so that we can say that prayer is powerful prayer of our minds our hearts our words our feet our actions. May you look within you. May each of us as a community look within us to consider how God might be asking us to remember this moment, to remember this sacrament, to remember Jesus right as he was being betrayed to death on a cross, breaking bread and inviting all into the greatest covenant And because we remember this actively, may God's grace impart upon each of us ways that we can be helpers in this world. One of the most famous quotations known by Fred Rogers of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. He said to the children, when there were times of trouble to look for the helpers that there are always helpers. Be the helpers. Live on the nourishment of the one who helps us to the core of our being. Reach out to those in pain. Trust that God is still at work and that God's vision is not violence, but peace that goes beyond understanding peace that's met by bread and cup at a table where there are always more seats for more to join. Do this in remembrance of me.
this is the time um, in our day together where we are invited to share our prayers. These can be prayers of concern uh, and intercession, and they can be prayers of joy and celebration. Whatever it is that you'd like to share, the only thing that we ask is that you wait for the microphone, just so that everybody can hear, because we all like to remember each other's prayers in our prayer journey throughout the week. Please join me in prayer. Listening and loving, gracious and compassionate God. Lord, you know us, you formed us, you are aware of everything within us. And so we trust that you know the prayers that are on our hearts. But when we lift them, Lord, we pray that you would catch them with your grace. We pray for family members who are going through medical treatments. We pray for the process of going through the treatment and the recovery process. And we pray for those who are traveling both within the country and outside of the country for mercy and safety for that. We pray for Kim's family. A lot of us knew Kim well. We pray for those communities that grieve today, for first responders and hospital workers and everybody who's in pain and those who grieve. We pray for everybody who is in need of prayer we don't always know what's going on. We don't need to always know the details, but we do know that you are with those who mourn and you are with those who need comfort. For you are the great comforter. Be with those who are sick, those who are dying, those who are lonely, and help us to see them too and to be with them too. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Friends, this is the Lord's table, and we trust that while we gather around it, that all over the world, from north and south and east and west, people flock to the Lord's table to remember, to break bread and share the cup in remembrance of the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today we're going to be doing things a little differently. We're still determining where this sung version of the Apostles' Creed fits in the best. Um, and it, what I love about the Apostles' Creed is that it does tell um, a hendiatus of our faith. It captures a lot of our understanding of our faith. So I found it appropriate to include in our communion liturgy. Um, please stand and sing with us our sung version of the Apostles' Creed.
Jesus said, Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we may truly love you and worthily praise your holy name through our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks and praise to God. It is good to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right always and everywhere to give thanks to you, the true and living God, through Jesus Christ. You are the source of life for all creation, and you made us in your own image. In your love for us, you sent your Son to be our Savior. He suffered death on the cross for us. You raised him in triumph and exalted him in glory. Through him, you send your Holy Spirit upon us and make us your people. So we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. So by your Spirit, loving God, be upon these gifts of bread and cup, that they may be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And as we gather together, we sing the words of the prayer that you taught us. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus Christ took bread and he gave thanks and broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body given to, for you, do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, in a similar way, he took the cup, he gave thanks and he gave it to them saying, drink all of you. This is my blood poured of the new covenant. Do this in remembrance of me. So friends, every time that we break this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim and actively remember the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ until he comes again. Amen. So at North Springfield, if this is your first time or your, uh, it's been a long time, we're, today we're doing communion by distribution. So our fabulous elders of the church are going to bring the elements to you, and then we'll participate together. And I think we might have someone in the nursery today. I'm not sure, but we might. Okay, so I invite our elders. The table is set and prepared.
Friends, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Friends, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Please pray with me. All things come from you, O oh God. I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong thing. We thank you, O oh God, that through word and sacrament you have given us your Son who is the true bread from heaven and food of eternal life, strengthen us in your service that our daily living may show our thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, this is the time of our service that we reflect on the gifts that God has given us and what we are able to give back through our treasures and also through our time and our talents. So this is the time of offering.
go forward knowing that you have been fed by the sacrament that allows you to experience God's grace in a way that pours out of your every part of your being. Know that as you go forward into a world that mourns today, that you are accompanied always by a God of compassion made known in the Trinity, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forward knowing that you are never alone and that grace holds you, peace abides with you, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit propels you forward to be a force of light in this world. Amen. <laughs>